protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. Good evening, I'm Christopher Naughton. Welcome to the American Law Journal. We kick off our 25th season. Are we ready to see history in the making? Good evening, this is the American Law Journal. To settle or not to settle? That is the question. Gina Passarella with the Legal Intelligencer reports. After years of controversy, the NFL concussion settlement is nearly a done deal. More and more government entities have programs in place encouraging whistleblowers to file claims. The key question, will the U.S. Attorney's Office get involved? For the American Law Journal, I'm Gina Passarella. Am I being detained? Pull over to the side right there. Am I being detained? If freedom of speech, the First Amendment, is the most precious of our rights, then the Fourth Amendment, protection from unreasonable search and seizure, is right behind it. To the framers of the Constitution, illegal search and seizure was deeply personal. Are you a woman? That's a very good question. 1952, a former GI travels to Denmark for surgery and returns a woman. Long before Renee Richards, Chaz Bono, or Caitlyn Jenner, there was Christine Jorgensen, what your opponents are saying is, well, Rendell promised us that we were going to get fair share act, but you yeah, didn't say they 60. didn't listen. But you didn't say, I didn't 60. say 60. Did you say 60? I didn't say 60. What number are you saying tonight on Logic? Well, instead of them offering objective evidence based on their experience and clinical uh, practice, that pharmaceutical companies tailor their message so that it's a marketing ploy rather than objective scientific evidence. But they're free to make the changes they want to make to those slides. They're free to do whatever they want with those slides. Uh, actually, they're not. Your argument is on its face a defense of autocracy, a defense of a slide into well, fascism, and we cannot allow Steve, that. Steve, Steve brought it up. More said, overheated said, rhetoric. You guys that come I'm sorry, heart. your rhetoric is overheated well, rhetoric. You're talking it, no, about so an absolute presidential hand. power in time of war. There's a far cry between F the draft and a breast cancer awareness cause bracelet I, that I, says I heart you. If the kids are not in school promoting cancer awareness and they just want to have armbands or wristbands that say I heart boobies, does your case fail? No. Last year, a Pennsylvania judge barred her from testifying on her Zoloft birth defect study. Meaning these trials can be won or lost based on who the court deems is an expert. The diagnosis is a bipolar disorder, which happened over the past 10 years is just extraordinary. Then why was your profession at the forefront of getting these drugs to these kids? Citizens United is sort of the poster child for corporate influence in the court because it really invokes the sense people have that we're losing our democracy. So the prosecutor then has a duty, a responsibility, to not let that, let that witness, I don't care if he's a police officer or not, offer testimony in that circumstance and he goes ahead and does it anyhow. Candidly, what you're saying insults the intelligence of a Montgomery County jury. Oh, that Do does you, not let insult me, anybody's let me finish, intelligence. Please. Let it, me finish, No, no, I've picked Do juries in Montgomery County, so including blacks, and they're, so do I. they're not going to be so affected do I. by they, they, I want to ask for I want the FDA. Uh, and I that's why all these problems we've had with the drugs is going on. You've got the foxes in the chicken coop. And you don't have one fox, it's, you got a bunch of them. It's a great jury speech because it allows you not to talk about the science. Stop for not wearing a seatbelt. Man goes to get his license. Shot once, twice. Shot at three and four times. Is it that much of a leap to say that sometimes, sometimes, we're shooting first and asking questions later? In this case, there is no evidence that's been presented to the court that suggests that the burden on this particular individual to wear makeup was greater than the burden on men. For that reason, clearly you lose. Under oath, in, in the trial, that he fired me because I'm gay and sold right. me because I'm gay, and, and, often said, and also said I was the best employee he had at that time. This is not a choice. They are deemed to be disabled under very subjective criteria, I should say. The criteria are not this subjective, Mr. Gokhale. And effectively, uh, Justice O'Connor's so-called undue burden standard is now the law of the land. This should really be about equality, right, that we did, that it wasn't the victory that we wanted. There's a, a law that says if the college has done something essentially to cheat you, to harm you financially or harm your education, you could have the whole student loan debt forgiven. In a celebrity case, I think that what comes to play is the old saying, shoot at the king, kill the king. And what we mean by that is if you're going to bring the charges, you have to win. And the reason I bring that to your doorstep, because you are one of the former assistant U.S. attorneys on the set tonight, and I've got to be thinking, maybe, maybe they're cowed today. Maybe political influence 
affects DOJ as well. Let me go to you, Joe Troutwine, because I don't want to just beat up on Joe Palucci here. Nothing here was an evil to be eradicated. But that's not a legal requirement. The, the legal requirement is only that the government be doing something essentially to benefit the public. The courts may not be equipped to handle what divorced parents seem to argue about most these days. Technology and devices and internet. They have no liability here, according to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court got this wrong. This is when the Constitution gets a gut check. For the American Law Journal, I'm Gina Passarella. Until next Monday night, case closed.